Hey guys, Toast here. A while back I did a video about tips about being a good squad leader and leading your squad and team to victory. Overall that video was pretty well received, but in the time since making that video I've noticed quite often in game people who have a squad leader who's giving orders and doing what a squad leader is supposed to be doing, but then squad members who frankly aren't holding up their end of the bargain. With that in mind, today I'd like to discuss tips for being a good squad member and being the best possible support to whomever is leading your squad. The background footage is all squad footage where I had at least three people together communicating. These tips are in no particular order as I feel they're all important to being a good squad member. The whole reason for having a squad leader in the first place is so that he or she can get everyone working toward a common goal. That's why the leader has the ability to mark objectives. Following suit to that, your responsibility as a squad member is to follow their instructions to the best of your ability. If your squad leader has Charlie marked, is there with three of your other squad mates, and you're currently sitting on Foxtrot, not only are you likely to be somewhat useless without the rest of your squad, but they'll be down a member who could be there to provide support, or even happen to be the last spawn point when everyone else has been wiped. If you want to go for the Lone Wolf playstyle in Battlefield 1, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you can't do that, but if you are going to choose to go that route, please don't join a squad that's trying to work together and take up a spot that could be otherwise filled by someone who's going to stick with the rest of the squad. This goes along a bit with the first tip. If you do find that your squad is on a different point in the map, perhaps even unbeknownst to you up until that point, and you're in a position where you're not doing much good, don't hesitate to redeploy to rejoin your squad. Unless you're in a position where either you can get to the rest of your squad in under 10 seconds, or the game is very close to ending to where giving the other team a point from a redeploy is going to make a difference, you're likely going to do more good by killing yourself and rejoining the squad than by continuing to do what you were previously doing. Remember that among all of the stats that are tracked in the game, your kill-death ratio or total number of deaths really don't mean a whole lot, particularly when playing a really objective-focused game mode. One or two deaths from a redeploy isn't going to have a huge impact on your statistics anyways, and the benefits gained by joining your squad should far outweigh a few numbers that you may care about, but frankly nobody else does. Redeploy, take the death, and join your squad. Everyone on your team is going to need ammo, health, anti-vehicle assistance, and various other forms of support throughout the course of the game, and while you should absolutely help them out when you can, your focus should be on your squad mates first. Now obviously there are occasional exceptions to this, say perhaps if you're a medic and your squad mate has 90 health, and the teammate next to him has 2 health, you should probably heal the guy with 2 health first, but ultimately your goal should be to do everything you can to ensure the survival and perseverance of your squad, and then help out other squads when you can. This means focusing your healing on your squad mates, giving them ammo, focusing on vehicles that are giving them issues, or using flares to help your squad identify danger. Ensuring their longevity means additional spawn points if someone goes down, and more support toward you when you need it most. What I mean by this is that as a good squad member you should take it upon yourself to round out your squad so that you have the best possible composition for the situation that your squad will be facing. If your squad mates are dying left and right and you only have one medic, redeploy as a medic so that you can help keep them alive. Do you have assaults taking out vehicles but nobody to resupply them? Come in as a support to ensure that they can keep doing their thing. Most people have a particular class that they like to play, but by being flexible, filling in where your squad needs it, and owning that role is going to make you an important and integral part of your squad. Not to mention you'll secure yourself some extra points by giving support that isn't already there. As we've mentioned, the goal of squad members is to closely work with the squad and follow the orders of the leader, but what if the leader isn't giving orders or communicating with his or her fellow squad members? Not only do you not have concise orders to follow, but on a more selfish note, you're missing out on additional score for doing what you already would be doing. If you have a squad leader who isn't pulling his or her weight, take the responsibility upon yourself of taking the role and leading your squad. All it takes is to request an order, and after a minute of inactivity by your leader, the role will be handed to you. From there you can take charge and give other squad members the tools that they need. 
Sometimes being a good squad member is knowing when the squad's leadership isn't doing its duty, so take it upon yourself to be the change that you want to see. Now I want to know some tips that you feel would be good when it comes to being a good squad member. Let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, please leave a like, and if you want to see more content, please subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching, this is Toast, and I'll talk to you soon.